What's going on guys? So here in this box is a PS1 that I bought from eBay and it's actually supposed to be complete in the box which means it comes with the manuals, the, the inserts, the, the original box and everything. And it's the original PS1, it's not the slim and it also comes with like five games. So I'm pretty excited to open this thing up and see what's inside. Let's go ahead and just take a look at the box real quick. Uh, you know, if you've seen my videos before, I like to take a look at the box just to make sure it's in good condition. Um, obviously this side looks okay. Got this side over here, kind of funny. It comes with a, uh, it's just like an, an old box that had fruits, dairy items, milk and stuff. And this side looks good as well. Obviously I covered up the shipping label for obvious reasons, um, but uh, you know, the box looks good overall. And I paid like $107, I think for this console. That's including tax and shipping. So from what I saw, it's actually not too bad of a deal uh, considering it comes complete in the box so it's, it, along with some games. Uh, so let's go ahead and open this thing up. So just a couple of things while we're opening this thing up. If you're not already subscribed, make sure to hit the subscribe button. It helps me out a lot. And also, if you want to support the channel monetarily, you can hit that join button. Um, support it for as little as a dollar a month. But uh, yeah, let's see what's inside of here. I've been meaning to get a new knife for, for ages because the knife I have is really crappy. And you can kind of just tell by looking at it. Um, but I mean, it does the job. I'm not like a knife fanatic or anything. There we go. Let's see what we got, what we got inside. Oh, we got some liquid i hope that's like dried up liquid from the past and not from the console because that doesn't look very good all right here we got plenty of bubble wrap that's good to see lots of bubble wrap got some other packaging and here's the box surrounded with bubble wrap as well um, so so far so good packaging looks good got some more brown paper on the side to provide some more padding and then as you can see the bottom had some packaging as well uh, so so far so good Let's go ahead and take a look at the actual box. So as you can see, wrapped in some bubble wrap as well. And so here we go, here is the original PS1. I'm not sure if this is like the OG, like I don't know if this is what came out day one or if this was later, but it is the original PS1, it's not the PS1 Slim. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's a pretty, it's an interesting box to look at. It's kinda got some interesting colors. It's like white and gray on the front, demo disc inside. I don't think this console actually comes with a demo disc. I'm not sure what demo disc that would be. But as you can see, it wasn't actually called PlayStation 1, it's just PlayStation. Because um, who knew they were coming out with a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, that sort of thing. Let's take a look at this box. It's actually not in terrible condition, considering it's like 20, 20, 20 or so years old. Um, but yeah, I mean, we got all our stickers and stuff up here. Got like your original warranty seal right, seal right there, which is obviously, obviously cut because it's been opened before. Um, but yeah. So there's the model number right there. I don't, that doesn't mean much to me right now because I have not looked up that model number before. But uh, here's some more info. This is like, oh, this is kind of cool. It shows you some of the accessories you can get for your PS1. So I believe this one comes with just the original controller, no analog sticks. Um, but of course, you can actually buy the analog stick controller, memory card. Oh, they have a mouse. I did not know they had a mouse for the PS1. Multi tap so you can play up to four players and four memory cards. Uh, analog joystick, I guess for like flying games and stuff. RFU adapter, AV adapter, link cable, SV, S video cable, and AV cable. So, fair number of accessories. And then here's the back of the box, obviously. Um, again, doesn't look too bad. Um, and like a lot of consoles from back in the day, uh, they show, at least the boxes on the consoles, they show a lot of the games that are available, which is uh, you know, it's not something they can really do on the PS5 and Xbox Series X nowadays because there's not a ton of games they can show in the boxes when the game released um, or when the console released because there weren't there weren't a whole lot of launch titles. But I imagine on the older consoles, I know I know a lot of the older consoles had more games on on launch day. Now again, I'm not sure if this is actually the launch launch console, so I don't know if all these games were available on launch day or not. But just something to point out. Now, if we look up in the corner, you can see some high tech uh, details about the console. So you got double speed CD-ROM. Custom multiprocessors for 3D graphics. <laughs> Full frame video at 30 frames per second. 16.8 million simultaneous colors. 360,000 polygons per second. Um, some other stuff. Exciting PlayStation features are 3D graphics, stereo sound, uh, fast responsive gameplay, 3D perspectives, broadcast quality, resolution. I don't, well, I mean, I guess for the day, I guess you could consider broadcast quality because obviously. Um, on a TV when you're streaming like sports games and stuff, obviously the quality there was not not great either. So I guess you know I guess it was on par. And yeah, let's just look at some of these games. So you got NBA Shoutout Shootout '98, NHL Face Off MLB '98, Kart World Series, Cool Borders 2, 
NCAA football game breaker 98, Porsche Challenge, Motor Racer, Star Wars, Gex, Enter the Gecko, Tomb Raider 2, uh, uh, Crash Bandicoot 2, lots of games. Uh, let's go ahead and open this console up, or open this box up. So, pretty easy. This is how most boxes were back in the day. Um, flip it open, and here's our AV cables. First look, they're actually pretty, pretty grimy. Got to wipe those off. Uh, we also have a power cable, pretty standard. Got your controller, and like I said, it's the controller without the analog stick, which just, it looks so weird. I mean, it's the original thing that came out, and it, you know, this was the standard, because the standard was not analog sticks. Um, but it's just like so weird to look at. It, it looks like a naked controller without analog sticks. And the back, um, both buttons on the back are actually the same same size. So, you know, R2 and L2 weren't, weren't larger or anything. Otherwise, it looks about the same. And then deeper down in here, remove, remove the flap. And we should have some, we got some inserts and stuff. We'll take a look at those in a second. And we got some games. Hopefully we have all the games in here. Hopefully everything is actually in here because I bought this thing a couple months ago and I'm taking a long time to open it up. So at this point, if it doesn't work, it's, I can't like, I don't have any recourse on eBay, which is unfortunate, but it's my fault. Uh, let's go ahead and take all this stuff out and take a look at it. All right, so I've already showed you the controller and the uh, cords. So let's go ahead and look at all these inserts we have here. So it comes with this little pamphlet that actually has a lot of the games in it, just kind of advertisements for it, I guess. You got a important safeguards document. So it says, it's you now deterring object and liquid entry, overloading, um, installation. That's interesting. You know, some people probably need this nowadays because people are not always smart with plugging their consoles in. Take your gaming to a higher level. So we got a magazine called Expert Gamer. I've never heard of that. I'm sure some of you guys watching have heard of that, but I have not. Limited warranty. Um, so it was actually only, only a 90 day warranty. Whereas most consoles nowadays, I believe, have like one year and you can buy extended warranty. Um, you got hint, hint line. I did not know that was a thing. That's kind of, I guess, I'm assuming that's for games. Like you can call for a hint. <laughs> 95 cents per minute pre-recorded information or $1.40 per minute for live representative assistance. That's pretty cool. I did not know that was a thing. Uh, we got the official PlayStation magazine. Cool. And here's one of the games. We'll look at that in a second. And here is the instruction manual. And on the back you even have something that says this to subscribe to the PlayStation Underground CD magazine. It's always cool seeing these old pamphlets that or advertising like magazines and stuff. Obviously people don't, people still buy magazines, but obviously not as much as in the past. Now here's all our games. We got foxkids.com micromaniacs racing. I have never heard of this, uh, but you know, we'll, we'll check it out and see if it works. Got the manual and everything. We got Gran Turismo 2, cost $19.99. I don't know if, I can't tell. It's obviously not a GameStop sticker. Well, I guess it could be, cause it could be a GameStop sticker from like the nineties. Um, I think we should have two, maybe not. I know there's some Gran Turismo games that have multiple discs in there, but I guess not this one. It looks like it should, but I don't think it does. Oh, there it is. So you have an arcade mode and you have a simula simulation mode. So it's interesting that they're on two different uh, game discs. And then we have Siphon Filter. You can get it open and it just breaks apart. I mean, that's kind of run of the mill with jewel cases, unfortunately. And we also have uh, Marble Master. Again, this is a game I've never heard of, uh, but Marble Master will we'll check this one out as well and make sure it works. All right, so far so good. Let's take a look at this console now. And as you can see, it came in the uh, little protective styrofoam things on the edge, like originally. It even has some tape. I guess somebody taped it up. This one even has some tape. I guess it got taped up once it got messed up at some point in time. Um, but it is cool to see people. But it is cool to see people uh, save all the packaging and stuff, so that's that's nice. Let's take a look at this actual console, though. And here we go. So let's zoom in a little bit. And I'm not going to lie, this thing actually looks in really good condition. Just looking at the top, I mean, I see a couple of marks and scuffs, like, right down there. You can probably barely see them on camera because there's, like, not much there. There's no, like, I don't see any yellow discoloration or anything. There's a little mark right there. Um, but, I mean, overall, it looks really good, to be honest. Um, I see some I see some dust back there, but I mean dust is pretty easily removable. 
Um, inside of the disc tray looks good. Power button, reset button, open button. Let's look at the front. So here on the front, you got two controller slots, obviously. One here, one here. Well, those are the memory card slots, but you also got the controller slots. Here in the bottom, we got four rubber feet. I don't know why these two rubber feet look kind of weird, but looks like they're all still intact. Um, yeah, PlayStation 120 volt, 60 hertz, 17 watts. Left and right side, nothing to write home about, pretty standard. And like here in the back, you got your serial I.O. port. I don't know, I have no idea what that's used for. You have an AV multi-out, which obviously plugs into your TV, and then you got your AC in. And then there's also this other I.O. port, or this cover back here that covers up another port. I'm not sure what either of these ports are used for, or if they ever were used. I know sometimes there's consoles that come out with these miscellaneous ports. They're just like random ports that are added on there and are never actually used. Because I think there was a port on the PS Vita, if I remember correctly, that was never actually used. Or maybe somebody did use it. I just know it's sometimes they put like a random, random port on there just for potential future use and it doesn't actually get used. And one thing I just noticed, this thing says February 1998. So yeah, I mean, this is 23 years ago at this point. Pretty crazy to think about. Uh, but this console actually does look in very good condition. Uh, so let's go ahead and plug this thing in, turn it on, and make sure it works. All right, guys, so I got everything plugged in. And let me just give you a closer look at this console and just show you how good of condition it's in. Um, hopefully I can focus real quick. But yeah, look at it. I mean, I don't really see any flaws to it other than the couple, like a few marks right there and a mark right there, which all appear to be stuff that'll, that I can wipe off. But yeah, I mean, usually consoles this old have like discoloration to them and stuff and just have just look dirty and stuff but this one looks pretty good so I got my power plugged in my AV plugged in got my controller plugged in and as you can see you guys have probably seen this controller before but it's just it looks so naked to me uh, just because it has no analog sticks but I mean works just fine with you know most PS1 games especially the early days of PS1 got my games here let's go ahead and turn this thing on and there we go okay I was concerned for a second but I guess I just didn't push it down hard enough and here it is I should probably turn on my volume so we can hear that nice startup sound but uh, it appears to be booting up that's a good sign and so one thing I'm noticing is I, I'll be honest I haven't played PS1 a ton of my day but I do remember turning on a PS1 like the slim version and I'm pretty sure I had a different main menu than this does um, I'm not 100% sure on that but this one looks it looks different maybe let me know down in the comments if you know anything about that but I'm pretty sure this boot up screen is, or this main menu is a little bit different than the one on the PS, the PS1 Slim. Um, I can probably look it up online as, as well, but I'll look that up later. Let's go ahead and try out some of these games. So, we'll try out the uh, Marble Master. Yeah, it looks like a kind of a puzzle type of game. Let's see, see if it works. Jewel cases are the worst. Those things, they always break and they're just kind of hard to open. They're not really that hard to open, it's just, they're just annoying. But I think this thing should just boot up straight to the game once I put it in. It's, it's definitely spinning, but to be honest, it doesn't sound great. But there we go. Alright, so it did boot up pretty quickly. And let's test out our controller, make sure the controller works. Oh. Yep, so X works. I can scroll it down. That's good to see. X works again. So yeah, this is some sort of, I mean, I, I'm assuming it's a marble game, some sort of marble game because it's called marble, whatever. Uh, let's try this, sudden death. And here we go. So yeah, I guess you just select a marble and place it. Interesting. Oh, and each, each one has like a different value and stuff. Huh. Interesting. All right, let's go back to the main menu. Let's try out the next game. So one thing we can actually do on the PS1, and it's this way with a lot of the old consoles, you can press the reset button, and that's basically your way of quitting out of a game, and you can open it up instead of instead of turning the console all the way off. Um, and there's your boot up sound. Instead of turning the console all the way off or just ejecting the game while it's playing, because obviously that's not the best thing to do. Let's try a siphon filter. I believe. I mean, I've heard of this game before. I'm pretty sure I've played it before long time ago um, or at least I acquired a copy of it and tried it out I don't know how much I really played it uh, but let's make sure this one works as well all right so I'm a bit concerned I've been sitting here for like a minute on a black screen 
it's definitely spinning in there. It started booting up. It did like the little PlayStation logo and stuff, but it hasn't gone past that. Um, so that's a bit concerning. Let's go ahead and reset this one more time and open up the disc tray. And I'm going to look at this disc and see what it looks like. Kind of hard to see on camera, but I mean, it looks, it looks like not bad. I don't see too many scratches on there. Now the top of the disc is a different story. It's pretty grimy. It looks like there's a piece of tape that used to be there. Kind of weird, but uh, let's try it one more time and hopefully it'll boot up this time. So yeah, as you can see, it, it gets to the PlayStation logo, um, but this is where I had the issue last time. After I did this, it, just, it was just a black screen for like a whole minute. All right guys, so this game is definitely not working. I've been sitting here for like two minutes and it hasn't done anything. Um, so that's kind of unfortunate, especially since this game is actually worth like 10 bucks if you look on eBay. Um, but I'll try later to clean off the disc and stuff. Kind of unfortunate. I mean, in the listing they said it worked. And I mean, they, they said it, they tested it out on the same console and everything, so you'd think it would still work. But maybe I just need to clean off the disc a little bit. Let's try out Gran Turismo 2 now. So this is the uh, simulation mode. The other disc is arcade mode. And hopefully this one works. I have a feeling it's just the disc because obviously the first game worked. And it seems like the, I mean, it's at least booting up. So it doesn't seem like it's the motor on the laser or anything, but this one's at least got to the, the logo screen. I don't see if it actually boots up all the way. All right, guys, so it looks like I got more, more issues. Uh, this PlayStation logo has not disappeared. And I hear a clicking sound in here. Um, yeah, I'm going to reset, open this up. Not sure what's going on right now, but uh, definitely having some issues. I might have to clean off the laser eye. Maybe it is a laser eye. Because um, now we have two discs that are not working and if we look at this disc It's really hard to tell because it's a black bottom, but I can see it in person and I don't see hardly any scratches, so You would think it would work. I mean it's spinning just fine Let's try it out one more time and see if it boots up. All right guys, so I spoke too soon. Uh, I got more issues I pressed start game and it stopped loading. It's been on a black screen for like a whole minute uh, So we got more issues so far, I mean, I was pre I'm was i disappointed because I was impressed at first. This console looks super clean. The discs look pretty good and everything. I mean, just looking in here, it looks pretty clean. But it has not been loading games, so that's pretty unfortunate. I think before I finish this video, I'm going to go ahead and get a Q-tip and some isopropyl alcohol and rub off that, or clean off that, that laser and see if that helps. And I'll come back in a minute. All right, guys, so we're back, and I cleaned off the laser. Pretty easy to do. Hopefully that helps. Let's try out... Gran Turismo 2 one more time and hopefully it'll actually boot up um, otherwise obviously that's pretty disappointing so let's hope it boots up this time alright so we got the the first logo screen and it did continue past the logo so that's a good sign alright so now we're back on this screen and after I pressed start game last time it just went to a black screen forever so let's start, try it one more time alright guys so here we go it looks like the laser cleaning might have helped because it did load. It still took a little bit longer than I thought it would to load, but it, it has loaded, so that's a good sign. Let's go ahead and I guess we'll do one, see if we can start up a race. Alright, so I'm not doing an actual race, but it's showing me an old race, I guess like a replay of something. And it appears to be working, so I feel a little bit more confident now. Let's go ahead and restart this and open it up. And we'll go ahead and put the next, next uh, game in. So like I said, this is the simulation disc. Let's go ahead and try the arcade disc, which is on the other side, and we'll make the, make sure this one works as well. Alright, so we got the PlayStation logo for this disc. This disc also made it past the logo screen. That's a good sign. Alright guys, so we made it all the way to the main screen. Let's go ahead and click Start Game and see if it actually loads. Alright, so here we are. Arcade mode. Let's try single player, road race. All that good stuff. We got a Corvette. Yep, yep, yep. And here we go. So it is loading up. That's a good sign. Um, so this appears to be working better now. Let's go ahead and restart this. Open up the disc tray. And let me put it back where it goes. Alright guys, so we got one more game to try. Macro Mani Micro Maniacs Racing. So let's go ahead and put this in. See if it works. The uh, disc does not look pretty dirt very dirty. It's definitely got some dust, but other than that it looks okay. So we'll go ahead and see if this game works, and then if this game works, we're going to go back and try the other game that did not work, and maybe it'll load now that I cleaned the laser. And so here's another interesting thing about the hint line. I'm not sure if this is the same hint line that was shown on the other 
um, that other sheet in the PlayStation box. But yeah, I got a hint line right here, 95 cents per minute. Um, I mean, I'm assuming it's a hint line for, you know, game cheats and stuff, but that's kind of, kind of funny, kind of cool. Um, I had no idea that was a thing back in the day. So this game has loaded up. Um, it does not have very good graphics, which is why my camera is like, there it goes. It focuses a little bit, but it's pretty blurry. Um, but I mean, it is a PS1 game, so I can't expect too much from it. And here we go. So choose our character. I have no idea where these characters are from. I don't know if there's from, I guess it's, it says it's foxkids.com. So I'm assuming it's from like a Fox show. Um, but yeah. So this is interesting. It's like, I thought it was like a kart racing game, but it's actually just like these dudes are just running. That's kind of funny. I can't really control very well because I'm obviously controlling with one hand right now. <laughs> That's kind of funny. All right, so this game is working. Let's go back and try out Siphon Filter since that's the one that did not work at first. Um, but like I said, I'm hoping it works now that I clean the laser. All right, so put it in there like so. And we shall see if it loads up. All right, so we got a logo screen, which is a good sign. I'm pretty sure we got the logo screen last time though, so the next screen will be the true test. Yeah, I think there might just be something wrong with the disc because it's been sitting on the PlayStation logo screen for a little too long now. Let's go ahead and take it back out one more time and I don't know, maybe I'll, actually now that I'm looking at it, it does have a lot of scratches. Um, that could be the issue. Probably is the issue, obviously. I mean, I'm not sure what else the issue would be. Alright, so we'll try one more time. I shown it, once I shined it in the right light, I could definitely see a lot of scratches on there. Um, kind of hard to show on the camera, but trust me, there were a lot of scratches. Alright, so yeah, now it's even worse. It just started trying to boot up, but now it's doing this weird screen right here. And yeah, um not quite sure what's going on but uh this game definitely has some issues <laughs> i guess it's good that it's not the ps1's issue but kind of sucks that this game doesn't work all right guys so there you go tested out the ps1 console and like you saw it's in pretty good condition unfortunately i had issues reading some games for a minute um i cleaned the laser real quick though and it, it seemed to help that but siphon filter is still not working so that's unfortunate i guess if any of you guys are like ps1 experts um, go ahead and down down low in the comments. Let me know what you think the issue is. I guess it's I'm pretty sure it's just the disc is scratched up too much. But um, if you think there's a, some other PS1 internal issue, let me know. Uh, but yeah, overall, I'm pretty impressed with this console. Other than the you know the game not working, because um, physically it looks in very good condition. It obviously came in the box, which is always cool, and it came with a few games as well. A couple of no name games, at least at least to me. You know, I'm kind of middle of the road on this one. I'm my my experience is sour because my game doesn't work. And it makes it even worse that I opened this thing like two months after I bought it. So obviously I have no recourse on eBay. I can't just go back and return the game or anything, which is, I mean, it's my fault for waiting so long to open it up. But, but uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know down below what else you want me to buy from eBay or GameStop. Or I've actually started buying some things from Goodwill. Go ahead and check those videos out if you want to on my channel. And, yeah, make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day.